So, um, I don't know about y'all, but uh, I, sometimes does your memory slip? <laughs> For me, sometimes uh, it's uh, remember names sometimes. You know, I have this routine. I start with A. Does it start with A? No. Does it start with B? No. Does it start with C? And I, I go down the, and eventually I kind of get to it, and, and uh, it, it comes. But anyway, why do we remember, and, and um, is it important for us to remember? And the thing is, uh, th it is important for us to remember, and remember things in the past. Um, it is important for us to remember things in the past because uh, it does uh, form our identity. The things that we've been through in the past uh, really forms who we are. Um, we, our experiences, we're sometimes identified by our experiences, probably both good and bad, but uh, it, it's, it is really our identity of things we do, the things we do in the past. Also, when we remember things in the past, uh, it helps us solve problems. You know, I've been through a similar situation like this, and so I can, I can handle this because I've been through a, a similar situation. And so we remember uh, things in the past uh, so that we can help us in the future. But also, it makes us uh, more easily sociable. Um, whenever we, you know, things in our experiences, we may connect with other people because of things in our past. And so, if we've done something similar, and I work at the VA hospital, and, and many folks will recollect about their military service, and that bonds people together in a social setting. And, and so, you know, that's uh, one, uh, one thing, is makes us more social but also it helps us in our emotions. You know, if we've been through some difficulty in the past and, and we remember that, we recall that, then uh, we're able to handle the present situation because, yeah, I've been through more difficult situations than this and I've gotten, you know, somehow gotten through that. And so it helps us from an emotional standpoint. But is it important for us to remember and celebrate our past? And that's what we're going to really kind of talk about a, a bit today is celebrating uh, things in the, in the past. Now, we do celebrate things in the past. Uh, just talk about from a, um, a national standpoint. I was thinking about, you know, kind of celebrations, big celebrations in the past. And I was uh, born in 1970. And I remember the, the bicentennial 1970. I know Dan's laughing. It's like a <laughs> young, young guy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I remember the bicentennial celebrations that were going on. I was you know, six years old during that time. And one thing that I remember in particular was the, um, I, I thought it was called the, the bicentennial train because there was a, a train that they called it the, the freedom train that uh, one of the um, train companies, you know, painted all up and, and made a, 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 a remembrance of you know, where the country's come from over the past 200 years. And it made a stop in Baton Rouge, and that's where we're living at the time. And I remember going down to the, the railroad de depot down there in downtown Baton Rouge and, and seeing the bicentennial train and, and that type of thing. But really uh, having us remember where we've come from. You know, when you think about it, we're coming up on, you know, in the next five years, we're talking about 250 years that this country has been uh, founded upon. Do you think that some of our young folks need to remember where our country has come from? The hard-fought um, uh, freedoms that, that has been hard-fought through the years? I, I, I do. Um, it's, um, it's slipped at times. I don't think that we always recall all the things that, that, uh, that we go through. And, and uh, so other celebrations that we, um, that we, come up, that we celebrate, do we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries? I think whenever we celebrate birthdays, you know, it's usually the person who, who makes that milestone, whether it's, you know, whatever the next year is. But I think the, the, the mother of the, of the person should actually be celebrated for, for giving birth on that day because they went through all the hard part. We were just present there. And so, I, I, I'm gonna some points on Vicki. Okay, and so, um, I think that uh, we celebrate that. Now we celebrate anniversaries. Say, for instance, those of y'all that are married, you know, what if uh, you didn't remember, you didn't recall, you didn't remember 
your uh, anniversary. And what if it's like, yeah, okay, y'all remember. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about remembrance, really, and, and uh, God talks about, Jesus talks about actually putting it into action. And so recalling your anniversary and then maybe doing something for your anniversary are two different things and probably have different results um, of that. Would you be disappointed if you're like, hey, today's our anniversary, and that's all you got? <laughs> and so maybe uh, a little disappointment there. Um, and so we, we um, it's important for us to celebrate uh, things that we remember. Um, we're going to be talking about in, in Luke, it's Luke 22, 7 through uh, 20. Let me see if just this advances. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about really the, uh, the Last Supper, uh, and that's going to be the theme, but I really want to go back really to some um, historical things and talking about really the, the Passover, because they are celebrating the Passover meal um, there in Luke uh, 22. But let me go back to the original Passover. That was really back in Exodus, in ex Exodus 12. If you want to, if you have your Bible, I would probably encourage you to go ahead and, and uh, get to Exodus 12. We're going to walk through several of the verses so you kind of know the significance about what they were celebrating, how it ties into Jesus' life and, and death, uh, and the blood sacrifice that he gave as opposed to the lamb. And so I think it's important to, again, reflect back on the reason why. And that's what uh, we're going to do. Two reflections. We're reflecting back on the Passover, but also they're reflecting back on the, um, the uh, Last Supper that he has with his disciples and then uh, how, what it means to us today. So we're going to uh, begin again Exodus 12. We're going to uh, begin in verse 1. We're going to read 16, 17 verses or so. So let me go ahead and start that. Exodus 12, verse 1, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month, this month shall be for you the beginning of the months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of the month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if a household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take accordingly to the number of persons according to which what can each can eat uh, that you should make account for the lamb your lamb shall be, shall be without blemish uh, make it a year old you shall take it from the sheep or from the goats and you shall keep it uh, under the the 14th until the 14th day of the month where the whole assembly of the congregation of israel shall kill their lambs at twilight again they are in um, captivity in egypt they're preparing uh, for the final plague um, the plague of the death of the firstborns. And so um, Moses instructed them to do this, to get a lamb, um, a, a lamb that they would um, you know, kill and, and eat. But if, if you have you know, a smaller family, then you share with families. You, families come together and, and share where they can eat the meat. Then verse 7, Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts, uh, and the lentil of the houses in which they eat. Each shall, they shall eat the flesh that night, uh, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Uh, do not carry any of the raw or boiled, do not eat any of, the, of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall uh, let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn it. In this manner you shall eat it your, with your belt fast and your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, this was really in, in preparation for them to be ready to leave Egypt. They had to uh, eat in haste. They had to uh, eat the meat. They had to be ready to, to go. Uh, they used unleavened bread uh, so that you didn't have, wouldn't have, the symbolism of you wouldn't have time for the uh, yeast to rise, but you needed to, you know, get the bread, and so they didn't want leaven in it, and so it's like you're in haste, you know, kind of, uh, you know, get ready to, to move, 
And so that's why um, it's an unleavened uh, bread also that they, that they use. Um, in verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I shall strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on, on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you or to destroy you, and when I strike the land of Egypt. Then verse 14, and this day shall be a memorial day that you shall keep it as a, as, a, as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall uh, eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses. If anyone eats of what is leaven from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Go ahead and stop there. And so he commands them to, uh, to keep it as a memorial day. So from that point on, they celebrate the, uh, the, the, the Passover, the Passover celebration. Um, it's the, um, it's, they're going to be talking about it here in, in the next, uh, in verse 7, here about the, the day of unleavened bread. And that's really a day of, of preparation. And that's where you rid your house of, of leaven or yeast. What's interesting is that nowadays when in your Jewish families with, um, with kids or, or small kids, they kind of make a, um, a challenge out of it. Uh, and the tradition that they will hide a, a bits of uh, packages of, of yeast uh, throughout the house. And the kids would have to go and find the yeast find the packages and, and you know, get rid of it from the house. And so they incorporate these same things uh, on the day of uh, unleavened bread. But it is a, uh, it's a day of preparation for the Passover feast. So let's go ahead and get into the verses. There in uh, Luke 22, 7, uh, then came uh, the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. This is, um, Jesus is uh, in, the, in the area of Jerusalem. He is staying the nights at the Mount of Olives. He would go into the Jerusalem and teach at the temple. Let me go back just a bit. Um, and... In Luke 22, um, um, 21, verse 37. And every day he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and lodged in the Mount, of, uh, Mount called Olivet. And so Jesus uh, retreated from the city, went to the Mount of Olives, um, and, and then that's where he stayed the night. But we go in the city and teach at the synagogue um, uh, for the, uh, for the, during the daytime. You know, it, did he have some contacts or people, you know, in Jerusalem? And I'm sure he did, but he didn't stay with them. He stayed you know, out, out of the city. Um, and so they came to the day for them to prepare the Passover meal, the Passover celebration. And so uh, this is where the story picks up at this point in time. So in verse 8... Uh, so Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. And they said to him, where will you have us prepared? And so here they were kind of, you know, staying in the Mount of Olives. Um, you know, they didn't have, you know, a kitchen. They didn't have the, the, the normal amenities that we would have in a, in, a, in a home to do that. So Peter and John, he sent um, uh, to go and prepare this. Now, a lot of times he would send a trio of people, and it'd be Peter, James, and John. But for this, he just said, you know, sent sent Peter and John for this. Uh, he um, there are specific things you have to do. You have to bake the unleavened bread. You have to obtain the the uh, the lamb. You have to slaughter the lamb. You have to you know roast it. Uh, there's also the other sides that come with that. Um, and the, the 
the drink that goes with that. And so there's several preparation, preparatory things that they need to do. And again, being of Jewish faith, they, they know that they need to do this. And so that's where they were doing. They were preparing for that. But again, they were questioning, okay, what do we do? How do we get this done? Logistically, you know, how's this gonna work out? Um, they, they probably, um, it didn't seem like anybody had welcomed them in just yet, even though they, they could have probably you know, joined in with another family at that point in time. But I think that Jesus wanted a special time between him and his disciples. It was kind of the last time that he was really going to get to sit down with them and have any type of meaningful conversation uh, with them uh, before his crucifixion. And so he wanted to have some private time with he and his, uh, and his disciples. And that is what, what happened. So Jesus had made these arrangements, unknowing of the disciples. It's not like you call up and I need to make a reservation at so-and-so and, and get that all taken care of. It didn't work that way. It didn't work that way back then. Huh, it's awfully small in there. It was bigger on that anyway. So we'll, we'll do this. Verse 10, several interesting things that Jesus had arranged here. Uh, verse 10, he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a, water, a, jar, a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room? Where I, where where, where's the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished, prepared, uh, it, prepared it there. And then they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. We go back to verse 10 there. It says that um, several things that are unusual. Um, he tells them to uh, enter the city in a man carrying a jar of water. Most of the time, it would be the women taking that role and responsibility of carrying water to and from, you know, from the well uh, to the home. However, this was a man doing it. He was probably a, a servant, you know, in this household. But also, notice it says a man will meet you there. And so it was like that it wasn't just happenstance. Uh, there was a purposeful that, you know, this man would, uh, whether he was expecting them or not, um, but there was an arrangement that Jesus knew was already going to take place. Kind of like whenever they were coming into the city in the, the following, the, the previous week, about there would be a, a donkey tied up on, the, on, the, uh, on a post by the road and, and uh, asking, um, uh, asking the owners that the Lord has need of this. And, and then they would grant them the use of the donkey and bring it. And so things were arranged by Jesus. Now, the, they didn't tell the, the person the Lord has need of this room, but it, and went in another direction with this. So, and also, he followed him into the house that he enters. And so here you have um, you know, uh, Peter, uh, Peter and, uh, and John. They um, just follow this man with the, with the jar uh, of water. I don't know of any conversation that they had, just that he goes into his house or courtyard of that of that establishment and they just kind of follow him right in behind that if we had somebody following us for any length of time uh and, and we start to go into our house and they just kind of you know come on don't you think that we would have some some questions for them uh we certainly would uh we'd be a little bit a little weary of that even if somebody just follows you in a car and they pull in your driveway right behind you you're thinking okay what's up um, but no, all this kind of went and flowed. And so as you know, they introduced themselves, they introduced themselves to the master of the house. So this man carrying the water was not the master of the house, but a servant. And so introduced them to the master of the house. And really, they were just a, a voice of Jesus. They told the master what Jesus told them to tell. So they were very obedient. They didn't ask any questions. But they, they said, quote, the, the teacher says to you, the, the teacher here, um, the teacher is not the same word that is used for rabbi or teacher. It actually is just um, a person who teaches. And so he uses this, um, and, and there, most scholars think that there's probably some relationship that Jesus has to the master of this house. Whether or not he had attended the, the teachings there in the synagogue that Jesus had done, 
there in the synagogue the, that week. Um, and so he says, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And this was probably a fairly large house. Uh, the, the man probably had some means uh, of money um, because uh, uh, this is a, a guest room, a guest, a, a larger room that could accompany, um, you know, 13 people. Again, this is not necessarily the, the main living room. This is a, a, a auxiliary room. And so the, the front man probably had some uh, degree of means there. And, and with that, he says, you know, the teacher and, and the man would probably recognize the teacher, meaning Jesus, uh, says to you, where is this guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Now, in earlier uh, chapters, talk about some of his followers and disciples. Um, Jesus didn't necessarily use disciples here as the bigger group of all his followers that followed him down the road as he came into Jerusalem, but really just the, the 12 uh, disciples that he has and himself. And so, where he may have that with his disciples. He didn't know if the other people that were traveling to Jerusalem, if they had other places that they were staying, whether it's friends or family and that, and celebrating Passover uh, for that. And so there, verse 12, and, and I will show you a large room furnished uh, and to prepare it there. And so it was a, uh, it, it was a, uh, uh, a furnished room that was set up uh, for a meal like this. Now, I don't know about y'all, but whenever I think about the, the Last Supper, uh, what comes to mind for y'all? I think about the painting. Uh, it was uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and and uh, it's not quite how it probably was back then. If you recall that, um, they're sitting at a table and they're sitting in chairs and Jesus in the middle and, and that. And that wasn't a typical setup. Um, and most of the time, whenever you ate a meal, it was a, it was a lower table and you actually reclined uh, there at the table. Uh, they had cushions and, and uh, softer things you can kind of lean on uh, and, and recline on that. And so that's probably what was uh, the situation there. Not necessarily what Leonardo da Vinci had painted, but it's amazing how visual we are that you know, we think about something, we remember something, and it's the, the visual thing that, that came up uh, uh, for that. And so, yeah. uh, our minds are pretty powerful. It, it, it remembers a whole lot of things. And so, um, there in verse 13, 13, and they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. There's no doubt that they knew that, that God's hand, Jesus, you know, arranged all this. Um, they've seen this dozens of times, you know, in the ministry that, uh, that they have done. Let's see. Let's go ahead and... Be, they're looking... Uh, Jesus kind of talks in the next couple of verses about things that are to come. And so this is kind of looking forward. There in verse 14, And when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And there was probably a, a set time that was traditionally you eat this you know, Passover meal at you know whatever time. So whenever that hour, that that time came, Jesus you know, came and, and reclined uh, at his at, at that low table. Um, have y'all ever eaten a meal like that? Uh, you know, at a kind of at a sitting down. Um, I remember going to a, it was. A, I went to a conference up in Washington, D.C. with some of my, my fellow residents at, um, at, when I was going through training. And we went to a, um, a Moroccan restaurant, and they had that in Washington, D.C., where you, um, you share a meal and you're seated on the cushions, and it was like a low thing. You actually eat with your hands, so you have to know the people really well <laughs> that you're eating with. But it was interesting uh, for me, and I, I would kind of that's probably something what it was like for, for Jesus. So, so he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. Again, the 12 uh, disciples with him. Then in verse 15, and he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now he had been waiting for this. This is a special time for him. Number one, his, his triumphal entry, entry into Jerusalem was the last time that he was going to be coming into Jerusalem. Um, you know, in his ministry here. 
And so with that, um, it was a special time. He knew what was coming. He knew what was upcoming. He knew that he would uh, be crucified and crucified within uh, a day or so of this. And so it was, um, it was extremely um, uh, important for him to, to have this time. So he has been mentally preparing himself for this and spiritually preparing himself for this, but he, he earnestly desired to eat this Passover meal. Have we looked forward to so much sometimes that we earnestly, I just can't wait till this, this happens. I, I just get you know, so giddy about it. You know, I can't wait till this happens. And he was like that. He wanted that time. And so uh, sometimes in the new uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible, it says that he fervently desired, or it can be translated, with desire, I have desired. And so that's the translation of earnestly desired to eat this Passover uh, with you before I suffered. Uh, you know, I don't, it wasn't because of, you know, uh, Peter and, and John were such good cooks that I just, I know that this, you know, roasted lamb is just going to be the, the most fabulous, you know, thing. But it really was the interaction and conversation that he needed to have with the, the, um, uh, the disciples. There in verse 16, uh, for I tell you, I will not eat it, eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. But let me go back. I uh, skipped over something very important. Uh, it says, I will need, not eat the Passover meal with you. I desire to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. And I'm sure that kind of, kind of caught him off guard just a bit. You know, this is a celebration of remembrance. Um, but here he brings up, I'm going to be suffering. But he's told them this on a half a dozen occasions uh, throughout his ministry. And so he brings it up to them before that it's kind of the time is at hand. Uh, I will not eat of this meal uh, until uh, uh, before uh, I suffer. So he tells them he is going to suffer. He's going to uh, eventually die uh, for that talks about later in the verses that you know his blood is going to be spilled and so uh, he he's being very um, uh, forthright with them and so he will not eat it until the uh, it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God many times the kingdom of God is talking about really uh, Jesus second coming the millennial time um, that uh, that he is, is talking about uh, some folks um, you know, did he eat any more from the time that, you know, he, this conversation until he was crucified? He probably didn't. Um, but this is talking about really uh, uh, the, uh, a coming feast whenever the, the, the Christ will be uh, reunited with his bride, the church. Uh, and this will be done at, uh, at his second coming. And so this is the, um, uh, we'll eat a feast with us um, uh, at, at the, at the, uh, at the, I guess the, the marriage of, you know, Christ with church. So, then verse 17, and he took a cup, and we had, when he had given things, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, spell check. So I tell you from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And so, there in verse 17, it says, uh, he took the cup, and he given things, and this is what we do in the Lord's Supper. And so, this certainly sounds, would sound familiar. Um, and during the Passover meal, they share four cups. Um, and so, uh, this is, uh, whether it was part of that, but most likely it's something different, because uh, he wants this to be a new covenant. And a, and a thing that they do in remembrance of him. And so this is probably something separate, a separate unexpected cup that, um, that he, uh, he gives. So he took a cup and when he had given things, just think, he is giving thanks for what? He is giving thanks for himself dying and that this, this cup, represents his blood. And so is it hard to give thanks when the thanks when we're gonna be going through a hardship or difficult time? 
for me, I, I think it's human nature really that we we kind of dread those things. And then we know Jesus was you know human, and he he uh, he prayed that this cup be removed from him. He was dreading part of this, but at this point in time, he was giving thanks to God for this cup again, which represented his blood that he was going to die. And so that says a lot. We also know that in Romans 5, it tells us to give thanks for the difficulties and struggles in life because it ultimately improves our, our perseverance, but ultimately improves our faith in him that he's seen us through that. And so, but Jesus, again, as the example of that, gives thanks for the cup. And he says, take this and divide it among yourselves. So, um, he gave them the cup and they pass it down. They each took a sip out of the uh, out of the cup. Now, there are some, we give individual, you know, you know small glasses of grape juice. There are some uh, religions that, that they use one cup and you take a, a sip out of the cup. Our kids, <laughs> I debated whether not to tell the story. Uh, our kids went to, a, a, some of y'all probably heard this. Um, our kids went to Episcopal School in Shreveport and with that, they have Eucharist, which is the Lord's Supper. They have it once a month, I believe, and they celebrate it in the um, the chapel. You know, they would go to chapels twice a week, and so they would chapel, they would do it once a month. And uh, after uh, Ashton was baptized here, we knew that he could participate in, in the Eucharist uh, up there. And so uh, he knew that we here in, in our churches use grape juice. And so he likes grape juice. Up there, they use wine, and you're at, you had a you know one cup, and they do up the the rim as you as you do that. But so again, Savannah's in the audience. This is where we hear the story from. <laughs> but Ashley goes up there, and he, you know, the the priest kind of gives him you know, the access to the cup, and he takes him a big old swig of that grape juice. <laughs> He soon realizes that it's not grape juice, and he has a, a decision to make. He can either spit it back into the cup, <laughs> he can either spit it out on the floor, or he can swallow it. But hearing from Savannah, Savannah says he could just, she could just see his eyes get big, big and, and not knowing what to do, but he's got a, a mouthful of this red wine. <laughs> so, um, he eventually, he realized, okay, I, I gotta swallow it, so he just swallows it. But he got a, an awakening uh, there in, in the, in when you took his first uh, uh, communion there at, uh, at St. Mark's. <laughs> Just thought I'd share that. But it, it doesn't mandate that we use one cup in, in the ordinance of uh, the Lord's Supper. Um, but, but they did. But uh, it's not a mandate that we do that. But some religions do. So they, they took it and divided it uh, among themselves. And so uh, there in verse 18, he said, I will, I will uh, not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And it's really talking about really the, the second coming that he, he, won't, uh, he won't get to share this with them uh, anymore. That, um, but we can um, look forward to a great banquet in the kingdom. And it talks about in Revelation, uh, be the marriage feast of the Lamb of God uh, and his bride, the church that we will uh, take part in that, in that uh, marriage feast. So then what happens is this. And he took the bread, and when he had given things, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, for which is given for, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we do that. Um, uh, Brother Mike breaks the, 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 the bread. Now, did they understand being the disciples there, knowing that he was going, to, he said he's going to suffer, but does, do they re really understand at that moment when they're sitting around that table, uh, do they really understand what Jesus is going to be going through? And, and they don't really fully grasp that, but it will come to their memories so quickly you know, after he is, um, he, he died, he crucified. Uh, they will know the significance of the breaking of that bread, the breaking of his body. They saw the breaking of his, his flesh and bones and, and, and body. And so it harkens back and it just is ingrained in the memory at that point in time. So he gave it in, in uh, saying, this is my body, which is given 
or you. Didn't say y'all, didn't say you all, but given for you individually. He died on the cross for us. <laughs> Did I just say y'all in there? <laughs> but he, he, uh, he, he, he really, he died on the cross for us individually. And he says, uh, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Now, a theme through this is really remembering and, and the, the importance for us for remembering, but also there's a doing part. Uh, most of the things, whenever it talks about remembering, there is a, an action part that's expected, is we need to remember, but also do. We talked about the importance of remembering a wedding anniversary. You may remember, but are you gonna do? And so, uh, it may be more meaningful, would y'all agree that if you know, your spouse did something, maybe for your anniversary. So uh, it's a remembering and doing. And do this in remembrance of me. Something else to think about is that, um, is how often do we uh, do we do the Lord's Supper? Um, and, and each, it really is up to the, um, the congregation. Uh, some people do it more often, some people do it less often. I don't think that um, he wants us to do it just once a year whenever Passover. Uh, the Israelites, they were commanded to do that uh, just uh, in, in the Passover. This is usually in the springtime of the year, uh, March or April, that Passover usually uh, comes about. And so, um, but he doesn't he didn't instruct us to do it just once a year. Sometimes once a year is a long time and we can get back into a lot of routines and I think that we need to do it uh, Do it fairly often. We do it once a quarter here and other special uh, Occasions whether it's you know, Christmas or Easter and we do uh, the Lord's Supper here. Others will do it monthly but it is um, uh, done uh, periodically uh, Paul instructs the church um, about how often you can do this. It says um, as often you eat this bread and drink the cup. And so he expects it to be done more often than probably just once a year. So whenever you do this, you know, um, you do this in remembrance of me. On our um, table in front of the sanctuary over there, it has, you know, do this in remembrance of me on that. Then verse 20, and likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out uh, for you is my new covenant in my blood. Again, this is a new covenant that he is, is making with them. Uh, we know that it is a new covenant that we are saved by the shed blood of Jesus Christ and not a sacrificial lamb. And so it is a new covenant. This is a marking of a new covenant. Again, they don't fully grasp it at this time, but they will in the next 24 hours understand it, particularly you know three days later after he he uh, rose from the grave, that it is a new covenant um, in, in my blood that is poured out. His blood is poured out. His blood was spilled. He died. Um, but Sunday's coming, and he was risen from the dead. Uh, yes. And, um, and so, but he wanted this action that he's taken with these disciples um, to, to be a very special time. Again, it was just he and his, his disciples because this group of people are going to be the, the people who are kind of the founders of the church, who uh, go out and spread the word, the good news, the gospel. He wanted the time with them so that they understood. They, he wanted them to take this um, uh, actions of remembering uh, the body and the blood for all generations to come. He wanted people to remember them using a, a, uh, a, a, an ordinance that we have to remember what Jesus did for us. He sacrificed his body. He spilt his blood for us because he loved us and it is a new covenant and this marks that. And so that's why we celebrate um, what, again, it's, it's, it's a celebration of what Jesus done, but it's really a reflection about what he has done. It says that we're, we're supposed to um, examine ourselves. Um, 
examine ourselves to look at, do we have sin in our life? Is it getting in the way between us and our relationship with the Lord? Um, and to not drink or eat uh, of this, uh, the bread or the, the, the cup uh, unworthily. And so there's an actual in our part, we need to examine ourselves for that. Um, so we, um, there is a, a part that we need to do, but really it's a, it would bring us closer remembering what he has done for us and the significance of that. And that's really why he spent this extra special time with his disciples uh, during this time so that, you know, we could remember that from, uh, from this day forward. So that's the lesson today. Talk about remembering. Okay. Thank y'all for y'all's uh, attention, and don't get uh, Ashton too much about the the, the <laughs> We laughed and laughed about that. <laughs>